Welcome all my lovely goblins and ghouls of the internet. I'm Hanya, your Demon Cinephile. And this is our what, seventh installment of our Saw uh, look, look uh, retrospective. And we are finally coming to what was long thought to be the conclusion of the Saw series. Uh, Saw 7 or Saw 3D. See? 3D? It's 3D! 3D is so cool, right? Remember 3D? I remember when 3D was the craze and everything had to be in 3D. You know, wasn't supposed, wasn't made to be in 3D. Oh, this was made to be in 3D. At least for the most part. Some of the traps were made to be in 3D, which kind of sucks because I actually have a nice. Th I have a 3D TV. I have a 3D TV. My 3D, my TV can do 3D. <laughs> I just didn't have the bad thing batteries for the glasses for it to go. So. I can't comment on the 3D, only that, only that it looks really annoying and stupid when watching in 2D. But this is the epic conclusion of the series. Until what, about 10 years later when they did Jigsaw, but we'll get to that next time. So, Saw 3D. This is the conclusion of Hoffman, the conclusion of Jill, and their little revenge ploy. So this takes place, like, it starts off like, Almost immediately after the last one. Uh, after the introduction trap, we get Hoffman breaking free and going after Jill, which is hilarious. Really, because Jill is running around the building lost and confused, which I hate because Jill was always kind of a badass. She was cool, she was confident in you know, every time we've we seen her. But here, she's acting, she's just running around the, the zoo like, where do I go? What what to do? We're just running around like not knowing what to do. And then when Hoffman shows up, she's just acting oh all scared and confused. This is not this is the uh understandable. Hoffman Hoffman is a scary mofo. They kinda takes away of the boldness Jill kinda had throughout every time we ever saw her. Let's talk about the opening trap. The opening trap is very weird compared to all the other ones. The other traps we, we normally get are confined. They're kind of um, in the dark. You know, it's something darkly intimate about it all. And here we have, it's like in this big city space. And these two guys and the girl trapped in a glass box. How did he even get there? I have no idea. It's not like early, early in, in the morning either. Like it's like super early in the morning where the sun is just barely came out, you know what I mean? It's like the sun just barely came out. It had, there's still a dark blue in the sky. Maybe we can buy it, people going to work. But it's like a large crowd. It's, it has to be like in the the, the afternoon. Like, how did not people not notice this? How did that people not notice um these people chained up to this trap in the middle of broad daylight? How the heck did Hoffman do this? And I guess it wasn't you know, it probably wasn't Hoffman. It was probably um, the other Jigsaws. We'll talk about them in a second. But I do like it. it's like Jigsaw's like, yo, you and you, you and this, you two boys, you've been played by this girl like for for, for a while. She makes you, she cheats on you. She tells you she loves you. She, you know, she makes you commit crimes for her. So you either kill each other or you kill her. Win win. <laughs> oh, I love the fact that Jigsaw. I can tell the, from the voice moderator, it was supposed to be John's voice or Hoffman's voice. But I love the fact that <laughs> Joseph says, she's toxic. But going back on it, since this game was 2010, I don't think the word toxic was like a thing people used to say, would say back then. The term, people are toxic, toxic individuals, toxic people, toxic partners, blah, 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 toxic, 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 toxic. It's like a thing that's been kind of popular. Or does not pop it like this is pick, picked up by like, last like five years or so, but this came in 2010. So, did Jigsaw help make Toxic popular? Did he? Did he? I want to know. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going on this tangent. I also want to talk about this because it kind of goes to one of my feelings about this film that the gore isn't really that good in the scene because when the uh, blade saw starts on the girl. It's very obvious it's a prop and not like a fun obvious like in Terrifier and Terrifier 2. Because Terrifier, Terrifier, the, the Terrifier movies, they kind of, they over accentuate the gore, but the the effects are so, I don't want to use the word bad, but they're like, they're done in a way where it's like, you can tell it's fake in a way. You can enjoy the bloodshed, 
without having to feel too grossed out. Here is like it just looked bad. <laughs> I don't know why. Plus, also the blood in this film is super inconsistent. For the most part, the blood looks real. A lot of scenes, the blood looks realistic. Other times, it's like pinkish, like it's like it's a Jalo film. I were like I'm watching Suspiria. I don't know why it changes throughout the film, especially in the opening. The opening scene and the scene where Bobby has to put the hooks through his chest. It's very Jalo like blood. Right after the opening scene, um, and Hoffman going during going through his um his slasher arc, we have Jill meeting up with Detective Gibson, the new detective for this film, and probably one of the most annoying characters in the film in the in all the movies. As when he sees her, oh, she's crazy. It's like this is almost his catchphrase. He just calls Jill crazy almost every time he's with her. She's crazy. She's crazy. She's crazy. Like. I, don't, I, I can't stand this detective. All the detectives, like, yeah, it was kind of like cool, fun detective characters. Gary, uh, Riggs, um, my, my, Johnny Wahlberg. <laughs> this one's just the first one, just straight up annoying. I already have Erickson back. These two's kind of cool. But yeah, she spills the beans that it's Detective Hoffman. He is the. He's the current acting jigsaw. He's killing everybody. He's trying to kill me. Yada yada yada. They get this god awful dream sequence with Jill. I just like she. It's, it, it's very obvious dream sequence because she walks out of the, the police station. It's this very bright blue filter over the screen. Then she wakes up in her nightgown. Hoffman making this giant um. What the fuck am I looking for? Like this big spear on a rig and just roller coasters into her. Like, and she just wakes up, like, oh, that necessary? The movies never had a dream sequence before, and this is just weirdly out of place. It's stupid. One of the mini games we got for today is Skinhead Game. There's a bunch of neo Nazis. Happy bloody fun time. If the makeup was better. Remember, I said about the makeup be the blood being inconsistent it kind of goes in here too then because the makeup in these kills was just very very bad i mean the got the one the leader of the gang his body's been super glued to a chair so he's trying to get up from the, the car seat you, you see him ripping the skin off his back but it doesn't look nothing about it feels consi consistent nothing about it feels real it's like when the poorest <laughs> makeup job in all these films and then his friend's arms get ripped off like very it looks CGI heavy. I could be wrong, but the thing it didn't look right. And by inconsistent, I mean because when the guy's bought, he rips his way through the um, the paint, not the paint, the super glue. You see like the outer layer, the inner layer of his skin, and it's like bloodless. But at the end of the scene, when he is thrown through the windshield into another car, he's all bloody again. And also, this was a very mean reward for the contestants because remember our last last review, we mentioned the Scream Queens that show on VH1, where the girls who went through went through the challenges and won got to have a cameo in the next Saw film. Well, she had a cam the winner of season two had a cameo in this movie, and she was the skinhead girlfriend. And did she have an awesome moment where she won the trap? Did she have some? A bloody good death or anything. No, she was just tied down behind under a car, screaming her head off. But the effect of her, her head splattered when the tire dropped on it. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. But let's talk about the main game of the of the movie. I guess you call it the B plot. Is Bobby. Bobby, 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 Bobby. This man who claims he went through a jigsaw trap, but never actually did. He, he made up the story to get fame and notoriety, basically become a little celebrity. Uh, his his best friend knows about it, his lawyer, his publicist, they all know about it. One person who doesn't know about it is his wife. After the little introduction scene, we have this really kind of cool scene where he's the leader of this Jigsaw Survivors um, group. But they're all giving their testaments. They're talking about how they survive. <laughs> so the one flashback we got to see is from a person who was made up for this film. She wasn't in any other films. It's her and her abusive husband hanging over a, a swimming pool of blades. It is so bad because you can clearly tell it's CGI. But we do get some kind of cool, interesting um, cameos. We get the Scream Queen survivor of the last movie. The girl who locked up her arm. 
we get the mother from the last movie, you get the two bros from the beginning of this movie, the rich kid junkie who's, who um, slaughed his own hand up all the way up to the hilt so they can escape. So it's a lot of fun cameos, which they could have gotten from all the movies. But, yeah. Oh, we also get our first great cameo, the reintroduction to the greatest doctor of all time, Dr. Gordon. Dr. Gordon is back, and he's being weird and creepy as ever. <laughs> it's like, yes, the survivor skills. It's very fun, very perverse shooting it for your DVD. Make everyone give him a loud of applause. Like, Dr. Gordon, Dr. Gordon. You're definitely acting. Please, you never change. You never change, Dr. Gordon. But uh, we get to get to Bobby's traps. But I, once again, I do want to mention, um, I just really noticed this. When Bobby stops to talk to his friend while the driver takes his wife to their car, there's a lot of red in the scene. We see red behind his best friend. The stairs leading up to the car is all red, which oh, it kind of gives it a fun James Wan feel because how James Wan likes to use red in all his movies to signify danger or the upcoming danger or entering danger. But yeah, but the big theme for Bobby is his traps, his games, is hear, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. So for his um publicist, she who speaks all his lies and makes up makes up everything for him, she has to speak no evil. And her trap her trap is oh god, it is the most painful one. It's the most painful one in the and probably in the whole movie. So she has a string going all the way down to her stomach, and at the end of the string is the key and a fish hook. And if he does not get the he does not fish it out of her stomach to all out out of her in in a minute he, these little tubes are gonna come up and uh, go, go, stab her in the throat four ways over but if she starts screaming and yelling too much they're just gonna start going anyway <laughs> it's like jesus i can't know why you're yelling but please stop yelling please stop screaming i know it hurts but please shut up shut up shut up shut up, shut up. <laughs> And the little meat, <laughs> when he actually pulls it out, the little meat, which I'm guessing is like from her tongue or her, whatever, whatever's in there, <laughs> whatever is in there, and he just pulls up, it's like, oh god, that's the first time in a while that these traps actually made me feel a little icky and nasty, and I watch a lot of stuff, so bravo for this little incident just making me feel Ugh. Uh, second trap is see no evil or his lawyer who's in prison for all his lies she has to she's gonna be rotated into these um spikes they're gonna cloud her eyes and she, and one be shoved down her throat i okay nasty nasty but what he has to do to help her see it's gonna go either way whatever, whatever he does but if he can hold this 100 pounds or something some ridiculous amount of weight if he can bench press it up up high enough so the circuit touches touches this and that and the machine will stop and being this hole just long enough so it doesn't kill her they went but each time he pulls it up it sticks it's a little spike sticks him in the side it's like god god, god like just hold on to it just hold on to it ignore the pain ignore the pain but he doesn't it wasn't that brutal I mean, the little sticks in his side are nasty enough, but that wasn't that interesting of a trap. Now, the third trap is very, it's very fun, because it feels kind of like the little labyrinth one in the last movie, where his best friend has a noose tied to his neck, but he's also had these blindfolds on, so he can't uh, see anything. So Bobby has to guide him through the tracks. And it does have, like, a, like it has that video game feel, like a co-op, like... You gotta do what I gotta say. You gotta go this way. No, go this way. Go, go that way. And it was it pretty interesting. The dumb three attack where he drops the keys. Eh, wasn't that bad, but kind of annoying with the slow mo. But this one was pretty easy to win. I just they could just calm down and think. Now the nastiest though, one of the nastiest scenes in the film, besides the fish hook to the throat, is Bobby has to to basically pull out two of his teeth to get the combination get to the next room. Someone has two has teeth issues. 
He's been had to have teeth distracted. God, this was so painful to see. And when a good in a few scenes in the movie where the blood looks good, it looks realistic, so it actually makes the scene feel even more gross and painful. I like how he he can't fully do it by himself because how much it hurts. So he has to twist and pull the pliers. One time he just rams himself into the door, rams his hand into the to the wall for the extra oomph because he just can't do it by himself. Okay, very brutal. The final trap though for Bobby. Bobby is he has to do what he lied about to hook these two chains like Hellraiser style into his pectorals then poof himself up and connect these two cables to save his wife. It looked painful enough but it really makes it bad that you can see Bobby just take his time just to hook it in there and like I said um blood effects in this scene in particular the quality drops on the blood it's not the realistic dark red it's that giallo pinkish almost like you're playing ding and rompa it's like it's weird but he hoists himself up but he's just not strong because pectorals aren't that strong because besides what he said and it rips out of him and it's it looks like just chicken balloon <laughs> across the across the screen <laughs> to be honest with a bunch of chicken breasts but then we get to the most dub part of the film it's it's white do you know what I mean? All these movies, uh, at least some, all these people do have done something very dumb and nasty. Where it's, yeah, I don't agree with you, Jigsaw, but maybe I can't stand in your weird mind why they need to be here, why they need to be punished. This girl did absolutely nothing. She knew nothing. She was not complicit in anything. No lies. She did that. Let's see. Ran over it. Ran over somebody we, we just weren't told about. She gets the absolute worst. Platform she's chained on turns into a vestal bull. And she is cooked oven. She is cooked. She is rotisserie in there. She, her hair is earth singin. She turns into Freddy Krueger. And you have to watch as she dies. And even sad for Bobby because Bobby really does care of her. Because he went to, to touch the things that go, go up to her. The... The wires that she's still contained in, I hit the microphone for <laughs> The little wires that she's contained in are electrocuted. He forgets all about it. He's ready to go up in there. <laughs> and he holds on his, and knocked out, probably dead. <laughs> this was the most undeserving, just mean spirited death in probably most of, probably all of the films. Because she, this girl really had, <laughs> has committed no sins. The plot is. Gibson, his his crew, um, trying to find Hoffman, and him being incompetent through it all. Because after they get to them where the neo Nazis died, and they find the bear trap that Jill tried to use use to kill Hoffman, and he brings his her like, "Oh, you didn't tell me you tried to kill Hoffman. I knew I looked it. You're crazy, crazy. All right, this is what we're gonna do. Crazy. You don't have to be a dick." <laughs> About this, he's like, "Oh, we're going. You're safe here. No one's gonna know you are where you are. Hoffman's not gonna figure it out. Really, next second later, his his when his subordinates like, oh, Hoffman sent a DVD, sent a DVD to this address. <laughs> like, yes, because Detective Hoffman, who's been in a police in the police force for twenty years, would have known the locations to all your safe houses. But okay, fine." I'm not a police officer, and I know Sarah knows the flaw in that right away. So they take Jill to Holdings, start investigating his hints in the tape. We learn that Hoffman actually has connection to Gibbs, and Gibbs Gibson was investigating this place where a bunch of junkies and homeless people used to hang out. Um, he was attacked by this most crazy guy, and Hoffman saved him with a little police brutality, <laughs> which. Okay, yeah, red flags there, and it become, but it's also weird because it says he reported this to, uh, he reported to his superiors, and Hoffman got promotion from it. Now, Hoffman getting promotion for police brutality isn't out the, isn't out the question for possibility, which is really messed up. But what's weird about it is that this wouldn't this be a public record? Wouldn't John known about this? I think like which wouldn't just add more. Red flags to Hoffman, to John, to Hoffman being going off the rails and using this as just a ploy to kill people instead of his quote unquote rehabilitation. Through another clue, they've realized that where the game is taking place, they actually get to the place where the game is actually being held, which is rare. They, they're, 
in the mood to accept the game before any more people can die. He gets another clue thing, thinking that from his um, subordinates, she telling him that, oh, the email that Kaufman sent the second video, it came from the junkyard where the neo-Nazis were killed. So they go there, and I love this twist. I love this twist. So they find the Hoffman's hidden room, and in the chair, wearing the old, um, the old, old the robe that we haven't seen in a long time, actually. And they turn the body over. It's the neo-Nazi. He's got his jaw and arms ripped off. So, apparently, early in the film, there was a big explosion. Two big explosions. They asked from Hoffman. Hoffman was in the little secret room. He caused the explosion to get everyone out of there. To, he dragged the dead body into his workshop, dressed it up in the hoodie, then put himself into the body bag. So it means Hoffman has been in the precinct or wherever the entire time. He wakes up, kills the coroner that was introduced in this movie, kills the coroner who's been in the last three movies, and proceeds to turn into Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, and just starts um, throat stabbing everyone he sees. <laughs> It's hilarious. He kills the recept on um, the tech girl, snaps her neck, uses her body as a little through the windshield. So like, yeah, you can trust me. Open the door. Throws her away. Leaves a big flood. How about the detective did not hear? I have no idea. Nice stab that man. Shoots the man through the glass wind, <laughs> the two way mirror. Asks, looks like he's about to uh, S A <laughs> Jill. Uh, which seems very out of character for him, but gee, Lori throws him, hits him in the neck with a nail filer. Him, he's, he's who is going through his process of becoming, My like I said, Michael Myers or Freddy or Jason, just shoves it off like it's nothing. Then we get to this weird little edited scene where they go into this evidence locker that apparently has all the evidence from all the movies. I mostly know it's traps from the last movie, but it apparently has all the evidence here and you get this weird edited scene where Hoffman is looking for Jill and apparently she's just right off his sight but we never see them in the frame together except for there's one scene where he kicks her but the you never see the actress face maybe the girl who plays Jill wasn't there that day I had no idea but then Hoffman goes off the freaking rails head smacks her into the desk for no reason uh, ties her to the chair like she did him and puts the reverse bear trap on her but not the one Jill used. No, 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 no. He's feeling nostalgic. He goes for the OG of reverse bear trap. The one that he was in Amanda. He fits it on her and just stands and watch. Like, you think he's going to do, like, a game over. But no, he just stands there and watch it as the best death in the whole movie. Where we actually get to finally see what the reverse bear trap does to a person. And it is glorious. When Jill's um, jaws are just pulled apart, we see her tongue sticking out, we see it deep into her her throat and everything's all gangled and mashed. Like, ooh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Put that on the grill and stir that up, you know what I mean? And then, I don't know why I find this hilarious, but when Hoffman's burning all his evidence, the Billy Puppet is just sitting on the table. <laughs> and it just remind, remind me of the, the dog from, uh, this is fine comic, where Billy just sits there like laying a Hoffman burn everything it was like i was almost expecting billy to start turning his head <laughs> like like the pub has been alive this whole time i mean no, that's not the twist the big twist is hoffman is intercepted by two not two but three pig heads and one of them is dr gordon because in our final flashback montage we learn that dr gordon has been another apprentice <laughs> Throughout these films, he is also a jigsaw, and he's been there with all the medical know-how that John's needed this entire time. He cut, he put the key inside the guy's eye in the end of the one movie. He sewed the one guy's eye shut for the opening trap in Saw 4. He's the one who directed uh, told John to kidnap Dr. Lin. I also get to see this fun um, scene where John is helping um, Dr. Gordon after he cut his leg off. Which is kind of nice, because I always kind of thought maybe this is something John would do. He would try to help the people who went through the game. But he also says, says um, things in one movie where he's like, you need to be uh, not be attached to, to the subjects, which, I don't know, make up your mind, John. 
do you not supposed to be feel emotional attachment to your subjects or are you supposed to nurture them after they went through the traps make your mind up john and just carrie ellis being creepy and <laughs> weird <laughs> like he normally is but i do like how he sends he sentences hoffman to the bathroom and hoffman's like oh the jaws. He go, he goes for the bone saw, but uh, Doctor Gordon picks up like I don't think so. He looks at the saw like it's an old friend, throws it out of the room. Uh, looks at his old foot like eh, eh, that's there, that's there. Gives his big old game over, slides the door and in the food. That was a little weird though, because we kind of see Adam, <laughs> good Adam, just reduced to a full on skeleton at this point. That would be fun, funny if he actually had a chance to go to Adam's skeleton like pet it or something like like hey there adam how you doing buddy been so long so long time i don't know <laughs> it'd be fun though so this was saw 3d this was a very weird way to end the trilogy for the main game like the whole speaking of evil scene of evil that was interesting that was kind of fun i felt like this was like weird um not weird but like kind of like wasted time to spend so much energy on these characters that we don't fully know about. Like the whole movie should have been about Hoffman and everybody else. I think this in this film we should have taken away most of the traps. Maybe give the skinheads to spend their traps just to watch those a-holes get tortured. Which would have been fun. And actually it would make better sense on the dark ending because in here um the wife when she gets burned alive is weird and mean spirited. But if you replace all those people with uh, Nazis, neo-Nazis, it's like all right, yeah, they just can't let, let those people die. And then the whole mean spirit of Indian kind of makes sense because you have the guy kind of maybe learn his lessons, maybe realize he's an a hole, maybe he realizes he needs to change his ways. And then right before you think everything's going to be good and dandy for him, nope, his, his loved one gets burned away anyway because, yeah, you are an a hole, and so is everyone in this group. But no, we watch these people who are just uh, lied for money that really didn't really hurt anybody uh get brutalized like no no but also i think maybe this movie should just like i said went away with most of the traps just focus all on hoffman and jill and make jill a uh, badass again don't make her weird and scared of hoffman make you something like they're playing mind games with each other like amanda not me <laughs> jill has the police maybe she's directing them giving them clues and Hoffman, we see how he has to renew maneuver around them. I think it'd be kind of cool, especially when we see Hoffman evolve from trap artist to Michael Myers <laughs> out of nowhere. That'd be kind of cool, especially the the actor who plays um Hoffman. I don't remember his name. He has an awesome name. What's his name? Is it Kotas Mandalore? <laughs> I hope I'm saying the right. Kotas Mandalore. <laughs> That's an awesome name. Yeah, he fits that um, slasher style so elegantly. Like he's just scary. That that man just walking up on you with his um, leather jacket and everything. Also, maybe we could focus more on Doctor Gordon and his little cult of jigsaws. Like his little fraction of John's killings. Maybe we could see a little bit more of that. That'd be more, a little bit more interesting than Bobby and his people. Which I do like the main actors who played the role, but I, don't know, I never really care for them. I'm more interested in all the cop shenanigans and Hoffman being a full-on slasher and everything else. Yeah, this was the final Saw movie for a long time. Was it a good way to end the series? Yeah, yes and no. Like I said, the time the traps were cool, um, but I don't know. I think we need, to, we need to spend more time with Hoffman and Jill. Throw a little more flashbacks with John and Dr. Gordon. Maybe you, instead of having Bob and his people, maybe actually use the Jigsaw survivors. Maybe give them their own big test. Which actually would kind of make sense because it's Hoffman who's making the traps. It's Hoffman who doesn't care about hurting people. It's Hoffman who doesn't care about brutality. It's Hoffman who's more interested in watching people die than, quote unquote, saving them. So it actually makes sense if you got all those old survivors together and Hoffman makes a big horrible trap for them and i'm just ranting here but this was a fun movie for the most part i think part the last part six and five were a little bit more entertaining no well, five was more entertaining because of lore wise part six was more entertaining because of the blood and guts wise the traps were fun but it was only, only interesting when hoffman came on screen if hoffman wasn't on screen or anything involved anything was not involving searching for hoffman 
I started waning a little bit interest. Alright, Death Sauce 3D. Not a good ending to the series, but uh, a decent entertaining film by itself. Alright, what do you think about Saw 3D? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Let me know in the comments down below. See you next time. Bye-bye.